In terms of understanding the end game condition, which as you can see here on the prototype rule book, uh, calculating the score is the biggest piece here at the very end of the game. So you're gonna go ahead and based on all the resources you have left over that you've then been tracking in your tracker all the way along, you're gonna come over here and find the value that it equates to, do some math and find out where you actually fall on the scale. You may be a cast off, you may be uh, a nemesis, who knows? But you're aiming obviously to be on the far right of that graph. So essentially this is in the prototype cost this again could completely change during the Kickstarter or have additions made to it but for now in this prototype this is what we're gunning for and we're obviously gunning to be more on this side of the graph. So the game will end in one of two ways. One is really good for you and one is not so good. One is you defeat the final monster in level four, which we talked about over there. So if we go through all four on the left of those particular monsters and we defeat all four of them, we are victorious. And then we can move to the uh, tracking of our score at the end of the game to find out how we scored uh, overall. But uh, we die or lose the game if you cannot spend effort when required to either either during combat or hunger. So basically that means defeat or death of starvation. So we'll talk more about that as we go through the playthrough, but basically you don't want to run out of effort when required to during uh, combat or hunger in those particular phases or bad things are going to happen. All right, so let's get going with this playthrough here. So we're gonna start off by using a general action here. We're gonna start with the scout one because right off the bat, I wanna know what kind of monster is sitting in this cavern in level one. So we're gonna use a, it says here in order to do this, we're gonna have to spend one uh, small effort as well as a time. So we're gonna go ahead and knock down our effort tracker to 12. Come over here to our time and knock this down to six. So we have to spend that and then we can go ahead and reveal our monster. Now, when this monster comes revealed, we get to keep it out like this until we actually end up fighting it. So we know we're going to fight this thing at some point, but we at least have scouted ahead and found a feral hyena. So we've got uh, four health on this guy. Um, the ambush here says that we would lose some effort. Uh, if so, in other words, if it decides, or I shouldn't say if it decides, if we happen to run the time tracker in this preparation stage down to zero, when this thing first comes at us, it is going to basically take away two effort from our effort tracker. And remember, that's a lose condition. If we get down to zero, we don't want that to happen. He also has trickery. Uh, so trickery is nasty in that he's going to basically uh, steal some of our food essentially from us, which is not good. Um, there's also a special here. So it says if you have any, see you can see there, if you have any uh, food or meat, Frelahina attacks once before combat and gains plus one to all combat rolls. So that's a special. Basically, if you happen to have meat, uh, he's basically a little bit more feral than normal because while well, you're carrying meat around on you, very thematic addition there. And then of course it's got all the combat actions for the particular uh, hyena when it attacks and of course it's using a die because it, that's how the AI works in this game that you don't know what's going to happen. In this case level one's pr not so bad, it's a 50-50, uh, you know 50% of the time you're going to be missing completely. A hyena is not that great of a, uh, of a, of a, a threat. But uh, the other on the other times things can get pretty nasty. So and you can see here even uh, down here the if he lands a six it's pretty devastating. The reward for this ends up being uh, two pieces of food as well as uh, four effort being replenished back, which is also which is quite awesome. So we're gonna keep this thing revealed. For now, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna drop this just like this so that we can always refer to it as we need to. Okay, so we're gonna start, and of course, we're still inside of that preparation step. Uh, so by scouting out, we are still in that general action step. I can still keep doing general actions at this point. Uh, so one thing we're gonna want to try to avoid doing, maybe, maybe, uh, I mean, we can't avoid having food per se, because we're gonna to wanna to be able to consume food to avoid starvation at the end of a level. But we know that the feral hyena is gonna use that against us when we if we carry too much of it. So. We might want to keep that limited uh, to how much we're going to hold on to. Um, a couple things to make note of on, in terms of the Brawler's player board. It says, I've seen worse. Reroll a monster's combat roll. Uh, use either of the rolls. Just a scratch. Reduce a wound effect. You suffer and power through. So there's a couple different things that we can potentially use at some point here. And you can see here that when you're in level number one, you basically have the ability to use it once. Uh, once we go to the second level, we'll have two cubes here. We can use it twice and go up and up and up and stuff like this. So you have to pick which one you want to use and then spend that cube. Uh, so now we're gonna go ahead, I think, and well, what do we wanna do here? Can we actually help ourselves out? So cunning is kind of cool but it, it really does cost a lot of effort to get that cunning bumped up. Um, 
This one's kind of cool too because you basically get to reveal some extra cards during your explore action, which isn't a bad idea. Reveal two cards, plus two cards, that's such a good boost. But you know what I'm going to do? You don't have to, if you don't know what you should do, you can always skip past, prep you can say I'm done with preparation step right now. Say I don't want to do any more general actions. You then move on to the decision step. The decision step is do I want to face the feral hyena that I've scouted out? No, I don't want to face him yet. I don't feel like I'm ready. So I'm going to skip past the decision step and I move into the exploration step. So at this point, what happens is I go to the encounter deck and I choose to basically grab, I grab two cards. I reveal two cards. And uh, from there, I choose one of these cards, putting the others in the encounter discard pile. And then now I have to choose whether to resolve the encounter or to rest. And you'll see what the differences are when I actually pull this card. So let's go ahead and grab two cards and see what happens because I'm going to do this. Um, so we'll go ahead for an exploration. Uh, we found one here. So for two time, we got uh, demolishing a tree layer. So we can go into a tree layer and demolish it. If we spend a medium, um, a medium effort, we could have gained three logs. See, this is where it gets interesting because this is where you realize that some of the things that uh, you can prep in advance, like I could have prior, I could have actually expended uh, some effort for effort actually to get one of those mediums and I could have actually done this. So this one's not so useful for me. So I'm gonna put this here for now. We get to draw two when we go on an encounter so you can pick between the two. This one is uh, an unexpected teacher. So this one again has a really high, and again, noticing they have hourglasses on them. So if we choose to do this encounter, our time tracker drops depending on which one we choose to do. Um, so in this case for me, this one's not really that great either because I don't have any food on me. So I can't do either of these. Um, so in this particular case, things change a little bit. I'll explain that right now. So what ends up happening if you can't actually uh, resolve either of the two encounters that you currently have, so in this case I can't spend food and I also can't spend a medium effort, then you're going to basically just choose a card and you're going to be choosing it based on the ability to rest. So you're deciding to rest and you're just choosing a card simply to denote how much time you're going to be spending resting and at the same time you gain back some effort. So if I chose this, I lose three time, but then I would go up three small effort. Or I could choose to lose two time and go up two effort. So I think I'm going to take the smaller of the two. I don't want to lose three time. That's a pretty big drop. So I'm going to go up two effort by choosing to rest. So I'm at 14, but I do lose two time. And this is what I meant by um, the ability for the monster to actually uh, ambush you, even if you're trying to avoid it. Because if you happen to go on those encounters trying to find good things to upgrade your character or uh, potentially gain resources, that ambush can happen if you get uh, a little, if, depending on the cards you pull. So at this point in time, both these cards have been resolved and these would get discarded into the encounter discard pile, which for now I'll just kind of put sideways and right by the encounter deck so that we know that those have already been resolved. So effectively at this particular time, if the time tracker had hit zero, then we would be forced to move to the ambush step and to the start of the combat phase, which is uh, different than the travel phase that we're currently in. However, we still have lots of time left, so and we weren't ambushed in the, in the exploration step. We're going to go back to the beginning of the travel phase and repeat the sequence we talked about earlier, which is preparation, decision, and exploration. So that kind of loops over and over and over again until the time tracker hits zero, and then we're forced into uh, going in or forced into being either. Um, ambushed by the feral hyena or during the decision uh, step, we ourselves decide we're ready to face it and we don't want to get ambushed, we're going to go after it. Uh, for me, I want to go back to the beginning, so I'm going to go back to the preparation step and start with general actions and try to do something. So what I think would make the most sense at this point is to spend, let's do some planning. So let's spend four effort to gain, or sorry, not four effort here, four uh, small effort to focus and get a medium effort because it seems like that's going to be worthwhile. So I'm going to drop this down from 14 to 10. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to grab a cube. We're going to put this on one. Now, actually, I'm going to put some other cubes out here because these other ones probably should have zeros on them anyway. I'll do the same for the monster tracker for now, as well as the heart level for the monster. Now, this is something else I could have done from the beginning. Probably should have as soon as we actually unveiled the feral hyena. Four health should have been placed on this so that we know this feral hyena has four health. Um, 
So at this particular step, uh, we have to decide, uh, let's see, and there's no armor whatsoever on this, on this Feral Hyena, so we don't have to worry about that. So back to the actions and what we actually want to do. So again, we have currently four time to play with. We have still uh, 10 effort. And again, remember, when you're during the preparation step, I can do as many of these general actions as I want before I have to go into the decision step. And if I want to go on an, an uh, exploration, then I have to move out of the preparation step. So hopefully that's making more sense. Uh, but anyway, we can go ahead with some more of these actions if we so choose. We do still have quite a bit of effort here. I could boost up and get two medium efforts. That wouldn't be bad. Uh, but I, again, I don't want to run my effort too far down because that could be dangerous. Um, but I think what I'm going to do is I know that my bare hands here, uh, two medium efforts will do three damage, which is really good. And I know that when I eventually face the Feral Hyena, I'll need four. So it makes sense to probably prepare. And let's actually spend another, let's focus again and spend another one, two, three, four. And now we can actually bump our medium effort up to two. So now we have two of them available. So later on when we choose to attack, we can actually do a more deadly attack. Um, and, and that could be perfect. And then to get the one, we can do two small efforts. So now we're prepared with our bare hands, at least, to be able to handle the uh, Feral Hyena. Uh, I want to do an encounter now. I don't want to spend too much more effort. I want to go see what an encounter will do. So we move from the preparation step right now to the decision step. Do I want to face the Hyena? I do not. We'll continue on to the exploration. We go to the encounter deck. Again, I could have, if I wanted to, done this one here, spend one small effort and get an extra two cards during exploration, which means we would go through here and get four cards and be able to pick which one we want, which would increase our chance of getting something we want. I could have done that, uh, but I'm not going to do it this time. So let's pull two more cards. So we got, uh, see this one's interesting because this one just allows me to gain something. So that's really good. So this one here is just a gathering strength encounter. So that's awesome. That's just me kind of getting ready. Uh, or I could spend some treasure to gain some cunning and two small effort by bribing the whelps. So there's some whelps down here in the cave. Um, what I think I'm going to do is probably this one. So I'm going to do the gathering strength one. It's going to cost me two times. So my timer's going to run down to two. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to gain another uh, medium effort. So I'm at three. Now I'm really prepared that way. Uh, of course, this is the card that I used, but both of them now are discarded, and I have to decide what I want to do. Now, this is where it gets tricky because I still have time, so we're wrapping right back around to the preparation step again. Do I want to risk going for another encounter and risk potentially being ambushed? If I get ambushed, I do lose two minor, or I always want to say minor stamina, uh, small effort, and I, I don't know if I want that or not. It might be better based on the fact I'm not getting very many resources in this level, which is really sad because I was hoping I could upgrade to like a knife or a club. Um, it might be worth my while to not push my luck. Um, or, or what I could do is push one of these and uh, maybe I'll do that. I'll spend one small effort in order to do the Orient, uh, Orienteer, which allows me to reveal two plus two cards during exploration so I can reveal four cards and then pick one and and that'll give me a better chance of getting what I want. So let's do that. So we're going to we're going to move through uh, preparation out of decision. I still don't want to fight the hyena. Let's go to the encounter deck. I'm going to pull four of these cards and reveal them one at a time. It should be quite interesting. Uh, so let's start with the first one. Okay, so that's exactly the same as the one I just chose, but that's still a good one. Uh, it wouldn't actually expend, well, it expends two times. So that would actually cause an ambush. So we're trying to find something that does one. Ah, there we go. Uh, reveal three cards the next uh, exploration. A look ahead. Okay, that could be good for for later. Uh, that's better. That's much better. Discarded lumber. Perfect. I don't spend anything. It's only one time. And that might be the one. That might be the one. That's awesome. Uh, this one's two. Okay, I've got it. So 100%. This one was trap shine, uh, shrine that I found. Uh, for cunning, I could have got a treasure and stuff like that, but instead I'm going to go after this one because this is safer. I spend one time, which is going to have my time tracker go down by one. This is going to allow me to gain uh, one log, which is fantastic, so I'll bump my log up by one. This is getting me closer, essentially, to upgrading my club in the future. It's not going to happen this turn, or this level, but uh, there we go. And then all the rest of these can go away. Okay, so now what happens is we are going to move back to the preparation step and I'm going to choose not to do any actions. I don't want to, I want to keep all of my effort at this point. 
um, and I'm going to choose now during the decision step to actually encounter the feral hyena. Before we jump into the combat phase, I want to mention two things that I'm doing a little differently than what the rulebook states. So I want to make mention of the fact that down here in the bottom corner, or not bottom corner, but bottom portion of each of these monsters is a number. You might be wondering why that number is there. That number is there because typically based on the rules, you would go ahead and actually roll, you would find all the level one characters and you'd actually roll a die to determine randomly which particular um, animal's going to show up or which monster is going to show up. Um, in my particular case, I just, for this particular playthrough, I just randomly built a deck of four of them without looking. So I don't have to do any of the rolling. Uh, so that, again, this being a prototype could change because, there's, in my opinion, that's a quicker way to go about it. Um, but that was just my choice and it's a little bit outside of the rules, so please forgive me on that. Uh, one other thing I want to make mention of, guys, is I skimmed over Trickery, and this is a really good time to talk about Trickery. Now, trickery, what this ha what this is all about, essentially, is if you get ambushed, which we didn't, but if we had have gotten ambushed, which means our time track had gone to zero, then this ambush would have would have happened, which means I would have lost to uh, small effort. In this case, because we actually chose to go after the Feral Hyena with time remaining, we actually get the ability to use the trickery uh, ability on this guy. Now, you might have thought the trickery was tied to the special, but it, and the way I read it earlier, but it actually is different. Um, the trickery is separate, and if you go ahead and choose to actually go after a particular monster, if it has a trickery section available, you can expend those resources to trick a particular animal to get past it without even fighting it. So in this case, if I had been lucky enough to find some food, I could have actually chucked the food at him basically in order to avoid him completely. And what we would have defeated the first level one bot that easily. Now it sounds easy, but you know, the, getting the resources that you need aren't always there. And this is one of the reasons why scouting ahead can be so important. But I wanted to make mention of that so you guys understood what the trickery thing is all about. So I can't obviously do that because I don't have, I only have a piece of wood and he's not gonna be tricked by a piece of wood. Um, so some of the things we have to be aware of here is it does say if we happen to have any food then the frail hyena is going to uh, attack once before combat and gains plus one to all combat rolls. So that special will not trigger because I don't have any food. So we're going to move into how combat works during the combat phase right now. All right, you guys ready for combat in this game? I sure am. So let's jump into it. The first thing we're going to do is reset our time tracker. The second we go into combat, uh, in this case, we went into what it was called a trickery step because we went ahead and, like I said, we were not ambushed. We actually pushed forward the combat. We went to the trickery step. We couldn't do it. During this trickery step phase, essentially, we're going to go ahead and actually take our time tracker now and reset it. It's going to get reset not to the one that we had started the game on, but it's always one level higher than where you actually are when you go into combat. So in other words, when you're fighting your first level one monster, which again has the one scratch on the back of the card, you'll be at two when you actually when you actually finally choose to face him. This will keep doing this every time when we go to level two, it'll be three, three will be four, and then four will actually be time tracker removed from the from the game board. So what we're going to be doing here is going after this Feral Hyena. We're going to start a kind of revolving combat with this Feral Hyena where we're going to be constantly fighting it. So let's get right into it. We're going to go ahead and start the combat now and we're going to begin with myself. So we're going to start off and there's a number of different things we can do. We can either attack with a weapon or we can take an action. So we can always take a general action here or we can potentially attack with a weapon. Now the first thing we're going to want to do is attack with a weapon but I guess our weapon essentially is our bare hands. Uh, so we decide to attack with a weapon we got to spend the ind the effort that's indicated here one thing i want to correct is when i did the monster setup this should have actually started at zero guys so i do apologize for that how this is tracked is basically how much damage is taken so it starts at zero which uh he has four total health once i get four damage on him then he's dead it doesn't start at four and go down it goes from zero up not too much of a difference there but uh just wanted to correct that so we're going to go ahead now and actually uh, make an attack. So we're going to we're going to go ahead and make an attack. We're going to use two uh, medium efforts. We're going to pay for both of those. That's going to do three damage. So we're going to be doing three damage to this um, uh, feral hyena. Not enough to kill it though. So because we did our action, now our portion of this is done, and we have to go to the monster's turn. The monster gets to roll a die. And again, remember those combat actions at the bottom of the hyena's board are what's going to determine what the hyena does to us a one so that's a full miss so we got a miss which is great comes back to us um, I'm gonna go ahead I'm gonna spend um, well in this case I only need really need one one hit point 
to kill it. So I could go ahead and spend two small efforts. So I'll drop this down to three and that's gonna kill it. That's enough to kill it. And you can see how close I was because I'm not supposed to get to zero. If I do, I become exhausted during the fight. So I'm really lucky I was able to, to do that. So now the monster is at four and bam, just like that, we have defeated the very, very first level of Unbroken. Let's go ahead and talk about how we resolve the spoils of war. So at this particular stage, we're going to go to the reward step. Now what happens during the reward step is for defeating the monster, which I did, I get to gain the resources listed at the bottom of the defeated monsters section card. So you can see down here, I'm going to gain two food, which is awesome because man, do I ever need food and that just saved me. On top of that, I'm going to gain four small effort, which is going to push me right back up from three to seven, which is fantastic. Now, something to make note of is we're also going to be able to pick two skill cards from the deck and choose one to keep and chuck the other one away. The other thing I want to make mention of is if we had have actually used the trickery in order to trick the monster, you do not gain any of the rewards from the monster. So that's something to be aware of. Yes, you can trick and get past a monster and that might help you. And in a certain, certain, a certain situation where maybe your effort is deteriorated and you really don't think you can pull it off, it might be a wise decision to do it, to try to prepare and be better prepared for the next monster. But you've got to realize you're going to miss it on all the rewards. So thankfully we didn't do that and we were able to kill off the Feral Hyena. He's gone, so level number one complete. So now what we're going to do is we're going to, we've already got all our resources set. We're going to grab two skill cards, flip them over and see what we got. So we have one here that says... Um, Poison Mastery. So this one says this skill bypasses armor. Combat action. Spend two cunning to gain three wounds or three cunning to get five wounds. If used by Sage, this skill inflicts one less wound. That's pretty cool. So that's one That's one thing we could potentially boost our character with is Poison Mastery. Let's see what the second one is. Spike Thrower. Combat actions, two wounds, or you get two logs and a medium. Oh, ooh, much. Oh, that's tempting. So cunning is tough. Cunning is a tough one because cunning, as you can see over here, in order to get cunning, I'm going to have to start spending tons of small amounts of effort, which I'm not going to be able to do really quickly. So I think spike thrower for my guy makes more sense, especially because we already have a log. So I'm going to choose spike thrower. What I'll do is I'll place this right here so that we know we have access to this. And this one is going to be discarded. So I'll place that up here like this. Okay, so that wasn't so bad. Um, the next step of, after the reward step is the hunger step. So we have to actually eat food because you can die from not eating food. Um, we have to eat food and it has to be equal to the level of the monster you've just defeated. All right, so let's move into the hunger step. Now in the hunger step, it's all based on the monster you defeated. So the monster I defeated was level one. So I simply go to my resource tracker here and I have a choice here. I could, if I want to, and this is some strategy comes into this, do I want to consume a food? I have to. The game says that basically, uh, if you're a level one monster, you have to consume one food. If it's a level two monster, two food, level three, three food, and so on. However, you can, if you want to, as a tip, you can actually go to your effort area and you are able to expend one small effort to actually replace one of those food requirements. So I could, technically save my two food knowing full well that the next requirement for the next level will be two food and then I'd already have it instead of depleting that and then losing uh depleting that uh depleting it down a little bit and hoping that I find some food I'd already have it so I think I'm going to do that I think I'm going to actually have my my um effort tracker go down by uh one I think uh, let me think about this yeah, I guess I gotta pay one. So I'll go down by one, that's fine with me. So we're gonna do it that way. Okay, so next up what we're gonna do, and that's considered uh, kind of a tip. It's a little bit of a strategy you can you can employ. Um, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna move on. So we're gonna go right back to preparation, or the travel phase essentially, and we're into the preparation step again. So we can prepare for the next uh, monster that we're gonna, we're gonna find. So there's a monster over here, second one. We have no idea what it is. We could scout for it to find out if we could figure out what it is. Uh, we could also, Again, scouting is going to cost us um, some time and some minor effort. You'll notice here I have six uh, small effort. I meant minor, but I meant small, but I said minor. Six small effort and one medium. Uh, Time-wise, we've already set our timer to level two, so we're already correct there. We've got a lot more time this time to mess around a little bit. So the first thing I'm going to probably do is spend uh, one effort, I think, and probably one time 
in order to scout it. Oh wait, actually, you know what? Things have changed. I gotta double check that for scouting. Yeah, see, it's gotten a little bit more aggressive now. It's two, sm my, uh, two small efforts and two time to reveal the monster. So maybe I don't want to do that. Maybe I want to go in there surprised. Ugh, scary. Okay, let's do an encounter first. See what we can we can get. So I'm going to do the encounter phase. I'm going to skip past preparation. I do not want to take on the monster. Uh, this is going to be a little different because I haven't actually scouted it, but you can still take on the monster without knowing what it is. I'm going to decide not to. I'm going to go to the encounter deck, grab two cards. So I got one that's gain, uh, that's a plus two on the time um, to gain uh, three. Actually, this is really good because this would actually give me three minor efforts back. That's really good, actually, or small efforts. Uh, this one's two. We have to use a cunning to get that. Ah, shoot. So I need cunning at some point. That's going to be something to think about. You know what? I think what I'm going to do is I'm going I'm I'm to skip it on this one for now because I don't have the cunning. I'm going to take advantage of this. And this is going to give me, it's going to cost me two time, but it's going to give me some minor effort back. So it's actually really good. So I go down to 10, but now this goes to nine, which is much better. That's a lot better. So now the question is, do I want to go back through another encounter again? Um, or do I want to potentially boost something with a general action? Uh, I really, really, really want to start building my club, but I've only got one piece of wood so far. I need more wood. Um, I could also do the reveal um oh, i could also do the revealing of or the orienteer which would basically uh allow me to reveal two extra cards that might be worthwhile maybe so let's do that let's do let's go eight so i'm going to use the orienteer which allows me to go for two extra cards now i'm going to pull four cards from the encounter deck so the first one is spent oh oh Rusted cage. That's pretty cool. So we found some potential uh, metal in there. Spend one food, gain some cunning. Ooh, some good ones here. Oh my gosh, that's crazy. I really, really valuable information. That would be insane if I had uh, the large effort, which I don't, and more cunning ones. So anyway, cunning wise, uh, this one's out because I can't do it. Um, this one's out because I can't do it. Uh, these two are in. So the question is, do I go cunning or do I go do I go for the starving goblins to gain the cunning? But then I lose a food. Or do I go after I think the metal. I think the metal makes sense, but four times a lot. That pushes me closer to actually you know what? I can upgrade to the knife. I can upgrade to the knife. Let's Let's do it. Let's skip the idea. Yeah, yeah, let's do this. We're going to do this one. So we're going to go to the cage. We're going to go to the rusted cage. And we're going to spend one um, uh, small effort down to seven. And that's going to gain me two pieces of metal. That's awesome. We'll throw all these other cards into the discard pile. That's actually pretty good. Um, now what I'm going to do is I might build the knife. So in order to craft um it just says on weapon card upgrade weapon so it doesn't cost me i mean it does cost me time in the end um so uh let me think about this oh and i didn't actually spend the four time my apologies i had to go one two three four thanks it's getting down there uh okay and then i'm gonna go ahead and upgrade my knife which is gonna be two times so i might as well knock that down even further but that's good because i am getting better and then i'm losing my medium effort but i'm able to craft the knife with one metal so there we go and bam so now my bare hands are gone and i have crafted a knife awesome i got myself a basic weapon which actually does some different amounts of damage and also gets through some armor it looks like so i'm gonna start needing to think about uh uh, doing some serious damage here. Um, I also have the spike thrower, which can give give wounds, so that's good. Might be worthwhile to convert some of my effort into a medium. So maybe what's what I'm going to do is I'm going to convert. Um, I'm going to spend four. You know what? I have time to go on another encounter. Let's go on another encounter. Yeah, let's go on another encounter. See what happens. Okay, so we got uh, Suspicious Mushrooms. Okay. And Unfortunate Adventure. Hmm. 
This one allows me to gain lots and lots of food, but four would make me, I'd get ambushed trying to get this one. So this one makes the most sense, two, and I gain one. So basically I just gained my metal blade back. Uh, it cost me two on the time. Now it gets, now it gets sketchy. Now it's kind of like, do I risk it? Do I push any further? I don't know. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go one more adventure, but I'm going to, oh, should I spend a minor effort to do that? Yeah, let's do it. Let's spend a let's spend a minor effort to get plus two for the Orienteer, and I'm gonna grab four of these. Go another encounter, uh, treasure to get. Uh, so he's like a greedy goblin. You give him treasure, and he gives you swords. I don't want that. Uh, makeshift blood idol. That is a medium for two swords. That's not gonna help me right now either. Uh, that's for. Ooh, that gives me treasure. Interesting. I need something that's one. I've gotten all twos. There we go. Whew. I was lucky, guys, because that could have been an ambush. I was looking for a one and all that. So there we go. I'm going to take this one because it's a safe bet so I don't get ambushed. I don't even know what's coming at me this time. This will give me an extra log, which is good. The reason why that's good for me is because I have this spike thrower, which allows me to do lots of wounds by having logs. So I'm happy now where I'm at, um, and that cost me one time. So now I'm going to probably go ahead and fight this next monster. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, one thing I also noticed just now is that I technically haven't actually upgraded my brawler's uh, abilities here. So I sh And I didn't need to use his powers last time. But I'm thinking that I'm going to look into this right now because I believe I'm supposed to have another cube in that second position. So I'm going to double check that right now. So I wanted to clarify this for you guys. This is the character sheet. And what I didn't do when we flipped over to the second level of the dungeon was I was supposed to go ahead and add a second cube here. This would denote that I have the ability to spend um, one of these cubes in order to actually use one of these uh, types of abilities that are specific to my character. As I progress and go further on in the different levels, I'm going to add more cubes each time there's another level level. So in this particular case, I have the ability to use uh, two of these, te technically two of these abilities, and the abilities will also let you know when and where you should be using them. Um, some of them, in most ca uh, cases, will talk specifically about monsters combat roles, or to reduce wounds coming to you, or it says when, like, when attacking with a weapon. Other characters may have something that says what phase it happens in, but basically you get more of these as you progress through the level. So now I have two of them. But anyway, we're at the point here where we're going to go ahead and um, reveal the level two enemies. So let's go ahead and find out who this enemy is going to be. And we're doing this because it's a little bit different than the last time we did this because we didn't actually um, scout at all. So we have no idea what monster is showing up and whether we're actually truly prepared. So it's a little different than level one and we'll give you a little bit of a different feel. But we're not going to be ambushed, so that's good. So it's a goblin. Uh, the goblin's going to have some defense this time. He's not that strong, uh, but if he was to ambush us, that could be really bad. There would, we would have lost some stuff for sure. Uh, down below, there's a trickery option. If we had some cunning and three uh, small effort we could spend, we could just bypass him right away. However, if we do decide to actually take him down, we gain two bladed weapons or two metal and one, uh, I believe that is a medium effort. So... Not bad, but he's not hes not overly too harsh. You also notice, though, that the rolling on the combat action is getting a little bit more aggressive now. So before it was a 50-50 chance, now there's only one chance he's going to miss. So we're going to go right, right into this and see whether we can handle him. So first, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and take the health for the monsters and set this down to 3. We'll set the actual armor for the monster to 1, because uh, that's where the monster armor currently is. Actually, sorry, I'm doing that wrong again. It's 0 and 0. We'll do that for now. Um, and we're going to go ahead and begin our attack on the goblin. So in this situation, we're going to go ahead as the players and start off this whole attack. Now, the fun part with this one is this guy does have armor. Now, how armor works essentially is no attacks that go through right now. So basically the majority of my attacks, I should say, uh, actually will do any wounds to this goblin until his armor is actually sitting and broken. So this particular goblin has one armor. I need to actually break that armor by moving this over to one. Once I do, then I can actually start trickling the health hits against him. Now you can see, thankfully, we went ahead and we got a basic knife, but we know we need a uh, regular, uh, or I should say a small effort, as well as a cunning, in order to actually break um, the goblin's armor. So 
we're going to have to spend, or we're going to have to go ahead and do a player uh, action. So we have to choose one of the following things to do. We can attack with a weapon or take an action. So I'm going to choose to take an action because we need to get a cunning that I don't have. So in order to get this cunning, we have to come over here and we're going to have to spend one, two, three, four uh, small efforts, which is going to take us from six down to two, which is not good, in order to get one cunning. So we've got to push our cunning up to one. Uh, this is actually really bad because as you can see here, I'm running so low on um, uh, I'm running so low on uh, effort that I could get into some pretty bad situation here if I don't uh, if I don't pull this out somehow. So I just went ahead and got a cunning. Hopefully that'll help me out. Um, at this particular point now, the uh, goblin gets to go, and the goblin's going to go ahead and roll a die for its combat action against me. So this could be nasty. Now remember, I do have a couple things here. I have this thing that says reduce a wound effect you suffer uh, by one to a minimum of one. So I could reduce that. Uh, that wouldn't be all that bad, I guess. Um, yikes, this could be really, <laughs> this could be nasty. Oh, and another thing too, I forgot this has to be set to three now. All right, so here we go. Uh, we're rolling for the goblin. And he got a three. So a three is a wound. So I've been wounded and it says that I lose one small effort. So one small effort knocks me down to one. All right, so there is one other thing I can do here that I just noticed. And it says, I've seen worse. And it says, reroll a monster's combat roll. Use either of the rolls. Now I rolled uh, the three, which says lose one uh, small effort. And I went ahead and I actually deducted that already. I'm gonna go ahead and use my Brawler's special ability to re-roll that. And I can choose from this roll and the previous three that are rolled which one I want to actually keep in play. Hopefully it's something that doesn't hurt me in the effort department. Don't know if I can really get out of this. I think I've got myself into some serious trouble. Oh my gosh, downgrade weapon for one turn. Okay, so basically my, uh, my knife would disappear and I would now have bare hands again. So that's, uh, that's not good. Um, so that was it. I would rather have that happen anyway. So I'm okay with that. Um, the only downside is, oh, it actually does have the ability to do... Oh, I could get through his armor if I had a strong or a large amount of effort, but I don't have one of those. Shoot, can I, can I gain it any other way? I don't think so. Inspiration allows me to. I need to have a lot more focus. I don't have it. Yeah, it looks like I'm in serious trouble here with my lack of effort. <laughs> so I think I might be, I think I might have hit the wall here because of the fact I only have one more effort. Oh, actually, technically I would have two because I chose to um, downgrade the weapon instead. So I would have two, but that's not, it's not good enough. Because um, even right now I can't do anything. Um, so basically on my turn, I'm not going to take an action because I can't attack anything that would be of any use to take down the armor that I need to get off the goblin. Um, so at this point I'm going to basically, um, I guess what other actions can I do here? Not much. No, there's nothing. So I'm essentially going to skip past my turn, which goes back to the goblin. So the goblin's going to act again. He gets to roll. I could re-roll this again. He gets a five. Five is worn, which says lose two uh, time. Lose two time. Okay, so that's not bad. Uh, it's hurting me for the next round, so that would be down to 14. But now this bare hands goes away, and I get my knife back because that thing says it was only there or only taken away for one round. Now I'm going to use my cunning and my minor uh, effort uh, in order to do the armor hit. So bam, we've broken the armor. Um, the only thing left that I can do. Uh, to kill it is to use my spike thrower as a last ditch effort and then it's just going to be close. Okay, so what we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to roll now for the monster because my turn is done. See whether or not we get some, please don't be bad, please don't be bad. Um, six, okay, it just says goblin uh, ignores your next attack. Okay, so he's basically just stalling for time. Uh, so that's fine. Um, can I do anything right now? Not really. I need to attack him to hurt him anyway. Um, uh, reduce a wound effect. Uh, let's see. No, no, no. None of those, none of those are really that great. 
I'm checking the end game conditions really quickly because I want to see, with the fact that I only have one small effort remaining, whether I'm actually able to survive. It says, um, the game ends when you cannot spend effort when required to in either. Okay, so you can actually go down to zero effort, but then once you're required to spend effort again, if you don't have it, you die. So I can actually win, I can actually beat this level two, uh, but I really have to get the right roll. So uh, he's ignoring my attack. It's gonna come back around to my turn. I'm choosing not to attack him because I don't think I can do anything here, even with this, let's see. Reduce a wound, no, that's not gonna help, that's not gonna help. When attacking with a weapon, spend, that's uh, that's not gonna help me. So I have to skip past my turn, goes back to the goblin again. Goblin's gonna roll. The only thing keeping me sane is this I've seen worse thing. I got a two. Now a two would say that I lose one of my efforts. I cannot lose that effort because I need it in order to, um, in order to kill him. So I have to now use this ability to say I've seen worse and roll again and hope that it doesn't hit me for effort. I got a one, it's a miss. I got a miss, are you serious? Okay, so I think I'm okay. I think I might've done it. So now what I'm gonna do is back to me. I'm gonna spend my last effort. I'm gonna spend two logs and I'm gonna do the three attack here for the spike thrower, which is enough to kill the goblin. Are you, that is crazy close. I thought I was actually dead there. I didn't think I was gonna make it out of that. Um, that's amazing. So, um, the goblin is defeated now, so I'm gonna gain, um, I get to gain some effort back, thank goodness, because things are getting diced. Not much, though. Uh, I gained two blades, so I'm up to four on the blades now. Um, oh, man, is my effort ever really bad. I really need some help there. Um, okay, so that's that. Uh, let's see. I'm gonna probably have to rest. I think resting during this next run is going to be really important. Um, wow, I can't believe I won that. Okay, so we've gone through uh, this reward step. Uh, so this one now I'm just going to flip over and we're going to get rid of it. So we've completed level two. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is grab some skills. So what do we get here? Awareness, ignore all steel effects in combat, spend two small efforts to ignore the monster's ambush effect. Okay, that's not that great. I typically like to scout anyway. Shadow, ignore all worn effects in combat, ignore time cost of scouting, gain gain a, an effort when scouting. Interesting. So if I scout this turn, I need a cunning and a time. It says ignore time cost of scouting and gain one of these when scouting. In order to get a cunning, I have to spend, so it cost me basically three effort to scout and I'm not gonna be looking to do much of that, I don't think, based on my insanely low effort right now. Uh, I think the awareness one's gonna be the one I'm gonna take, because I don't wanna have the steel effects in combat. Yeah, let's do that, just in case. And then if we happen to go over in time, then we're, we have awareness at least. So we'll go with that. Uh, we also have to eat food, and because we were smart in the prior round, we kept food, and I don't, because I definitely don't have the effort to do it. I could spend this effort and then one food, but I'd prefer to keep this. Uh, so I'm gonna spend both of my food to keep myself alive. Now I have absolutely no food left. I'm literally on the bleeding edge of death. Um, and uh, wow, okay, I've got enough blades to sink a ship. So if I wanted to try to get towards a sword, I definitely have, I can do that actually. I actually have the resources to make a sword right now. That's crazy. I wonder what a sword would do. Jeez, okay, well anyway. Uh, the reason that my timer is gonna start at 14 in this coming round is because the goblin actually stole some time from me. So that's gonna be a little nasty. It's gonna hurt me going into this round so I don't get to start up at 16. I am actually down at 14, which is kind of sad. Uh, the goblin uh, hurt me a little bit longer than I would have liked. Um, so far, so good though. Um, We've ate our food, so we're all squared up there, and I think we're gonna go ahead and begin level number three. All right, I didn't know about you guys, but uh, I didn't think I'd make it this far. One thing we're gonna go ahead to do to start the third level is gonna go replenish all of these, because every single time you go up the level, you have that many times to use your special abilities. So now I have the ability to use it three times, which is good. Really hurting on the effort department, so going into encounters is gonna be huge. I'm gonna be looking big time for things that are gonna help me in terms of gaining back um, 
effort because, uh, you know, besides anything else, that is going to be key. Uh, what I might want to do, and I know that I can do this right now, I have two time, three blades, and one medium act and one medium effort. If I do that right now, I can build a sword, which would be really good. But I want to keep this just in case one of the encounters gives me something that is even better. So I'm going to go on an encounter first. I'm also not going to scout much. I'm going to go just go into these encounters and try to find something useful. Uh, I could use the Orienteer uh, in order to reveal plus two cards, uh, but as you can see, I'd have to break down one of these and I'm just not willing to do that right now. So we're going to go right into an encounter and hope for the best. So we're pulling two encounter cards, hoping to find something decent. Cross your fingers for me because I'm not even sure. And actually, before we go ahead with this, I'll just drop all this monster stuff um, back down to zero. And here we go. Okay, good. That finally, okay, catching a breath. That could not have come at a better time. So we got catching a breath, perfect. And uh, commit to the next encounter, gain cunning. Okay, this is the one I'm dropping for sure. I'm gonna catch my breath one time. That is a cheap thing to afford to get two effort back. Awesome, totally worth it. Okay, so that was good, good news. I'm gonna do that again. I'm gonna go back into another encounter. Of course, I'm not choosing to go for the third level yet. Come on, be good. Um, a gift to the spirits, spend one log and gain. Oh, if I hadn't used my logs last turn, that would have been good. And there's no time needed on that one. That's really nice. And this one here is one and, oh, that's really good. That's really good. So I'm gonna do that one. Spend one minor or uh, small effort to gain a medium effort. That's fantastic. I will do that. I also have to take one time hit for that. Now just remember guys, I don't have to just be looking for, uh, and I have been doing this, but I don't have to just be looking for um, uh, cards in here to help my effort tracker go back up because um, I can rest on my turn. And if I choose to rest, then again, I lose that amount of time, but I can go up in effort. So if I get a really crazy heavy card that comes out here, like a four or five, I can take a massive time hit to get a whole bunch of effort. And that's what I'm kind of hoping for. So just so you guys know, I'm aware of that. I'm looking for it. So we're gonna go do another encounter. There it is. There's the kind of card we're talking about. Um, that's crazy. Um, oh my gosh, that's really good. Um, that's so tough. That's so tough to pass up. Okay, and the second one is a one, spend a food. I don't have any food. So this is the one I can't do. So the question becomes, do I do this? I don't, I just gain two medium efforts, which would be incredible, uh, and spend five time. I think so. Because based on how much it takes to get a medium effort, this would be silly to rest. I'm gonna do this. So I'm gonna spend five time to gain two medium efforts. Now I'm up to four on this. And it's what, five? So I'm from 12, one, two, three, four. I'm down to seven. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna do some crafting. I come to my actions, I'm gonna craft. So I'm gonna craft a sword. I'm gonna use one medium um, effort. I'm gonna use two times. It's gonna drop down to five. I'm gonna use three blades. So I'm gonna go from four down to one. And this basic knife has now been crafted into, I'm just gonna go find it here. Uh, in the pile, this crafted knife has now turned into an advanced sword weapon. That is awesome. So now I've got the ability to break armor with minor, with small efforts. Uh, my medium efforts are going to be hitting for three, which is fantastic because I have a whole bunch of them. I am much more prepared. Let's go on another encounter. Let's get even even stronger uh, because we know whatever's coming is not going to be pleasant. So let's go on another one. We got discarded weaponry for one. Commit to the next encounter and you gain a blade. Eh, that's not that exciting for me right now. Uh, ooh, I don't have, I do not have kind of a major effort or, or large effort. So that's not gonna be good either. Um, so this is one of those situations where I could commit to the next encounter. Um, or I could rest. Let's rest. Let's just rest. So basically we lose a time and we gain an effort. We're resting. All right. Let's do another let's do another batch of encounters. I want to keep keep getting stronger here. So uh, sickly berries, okay. So one this will give me some food. Oh, remember cuz at the end of this whole thing I need to get some food. 
Okay, so I definitely cannot do the hunger pangs one, but the food one makes sense. I think I'm going to actually reduce this to gain a food because I don't want to get myself into a trap there at the end of the game. Uh, and that'll be one. Now remember, I don't know what my monster is yet, so this is going to get a little sketchy going into this. I also got to be careful here because I want to keep enough effort to be able to uh, do an attack. So now I'm kind of getting into sketchier territory. Um, let's go another encounter, see what we get. A two, okay, that that's safe, just because it's a blade though, and a one. Um, again, I could drop another to increase a medium effort. Oh, what do I do? This one's a one. For one, I think that's worth it. To be honest. So, I think. I think. But then if I need to break the armor, I need to have a small effort. So, uh, maybe I don't do that. Let's do... Or I could rest. Or I could rest. Let's... Let's rest, I think. Yeah, I'm going to rest. So I'm going to rest for two, which is going to drop this from three to one. And then this is going to put my effort up to three. All right. And then at this point now, we're going to go ahead and we're going to say we're going to face this monster, whatever it is. So we're going to go into it. We're going to hope for the best. Let's find out what we're facing. I didn't scout, so who knows how bad this is going to be. Uh, it is a knoll, okay? It's not going to ambush us, so that's good. It's got nine health. Um, ambush would have uh, attacked twice in every round of combat. That's terrible. We can use uh, uh, gold or treasure, a log, and a blade to trick him, to get past him. We don't have uh, a number of those things. Uh, yikes. His special power of attacks, three plus, is halved. Uh, so power of attacks, three plus, is halved round up. Oh my goodness. That is insane. Okay. Um, oh my goodness. The rewards are crazy on this guy. All right. Well, that's that's what that is. So uh, let's head into this one. This is going to be quite the battle. So if you guys are ready to join me, we're going to go into the level three battle. And I uh, hope you got your fingers crossed for me because I think I'm going to need it. This is going to be interesting. I've got my sword, though. I'm hoping that that's going to be the ticket to uh, keep me alive here. All right, I don't know about you guys, but man, am I ever concerned about this guy. So not only is he nasty, but he's got this crazy special that I already read out earlier saying power of three attacks that are three plus, they're halved. They're like, they're half and half. So like I was thinking, at least my plan was anyway, to use this sword here and be using kind of a medium effort for three damage every time, but that would be halved every time I take a shot at him, meaning it would be 1.5 rounded up to two. So it'd be, I could basically do that three times, which would be, um, and this would come across as two damage. So two damage, two damage, two damage, so six. And then if I used three of my kind of small efforts, I could put three more damage on him. That would be nine. That's enough to kill him. The crazy thing is I have to go through all those attacks and hope that he never once takes a single effort from me. Because if he does, I run out of effort. I can't even, I can't even, um, there's nothing I can do basically at that point. So this is going to be, this could be the end for me. I may be at the wall now. Maybe I should have died in the last level. <laughs> Uh, so let's go ahead and do this. So we're going to start with my turn. Um, the only thing I'm going to think about really quickly is if I have any abilities that can help me. Uh, the re-rolling of the monster's combat roll, I can do that three times. So that's going to help me possibly survive. So I'm going to probably hold it for all of the re-roll actions to just be crossing my fingers on fate and opening that luck is on my side. Well, not necessarily fate, but more so luck. So we'll start off with a, uh, a nice attack here. Now I'm just trying to think if I go ahead and I attack... Yeah, so let's go ahead and use the meat. So we're going to do one medium effort attack here for three. Of course, his special says power of attacks three or plus is half round up. So two damage against uh, no, there's no uh, armor on him. So that's good. But I'm trying to get this thing up to nine. Um, that's it for me. Uh, again, over here, looking at these other abilities I have, guys, just so that you're aware, none of this stuff helps me right now. I don't have any wood to spend um, and stuff like this. I don't have, this just does nothing for me right now. So 
we're jumping in this one blind. We're, we're, we're going in with what we've got and it's gonna be it's gonna be tough. So three, uh, this one says that I, I lose, it's a worn and it says I lose time. So again, I forgot from prior, I need to move this up to one level higher than I'm currently in. So this should be up to four now, but I lose time. So I mean, he's sucking time away from my next uh, round essentially, which is not good. Uh, but he didn't take away any effort, so that's good. So I'll do another effort hit for medium effort, which is going to be another two damage on him. Take him up to four. He's going to roll again against me. He got a five. It says it's a threatened condition. It says gain afraid for the next level. Okay, so we got to take the afraid condition, which what I'm going to do to remind myself of that, although I could have just waited to do this later, but I'll just go through this deck and I wouldn't be the least bit surprised if it's the last card. No, it's not. But this is going to be the next level. So I'm going to put this card on top of level four because that's going to basically impact me on the next level. So he's made me afraid. He's terrified me. Um, but we're still okay-ish. Now I'm going to go like this. Uh, use that medium effort. Uh, that's going to inflict uh, two more damage on him. So now he's at one. He's now at six. Um... So that's not bad, I guess. We're gonna roll one more time here. Let's see what happens. He got a six. So this one says steal. You lose, um... Oh, okay, so I get to choose which one I lose. I can lose a blade, a treasure, a log, or food. So I'll choose to lose a blade. I'll keep my food. Uh, now I'm gonna be going into what's very interesting because I have to figure out, do I I have three effort remaining. How can I make this three effort work out the best for me? Do I have um, any way to make this work? So, let's see here. No, it doesn't, it doesn't help me. I need to use these efforts individually, but what I'm realizing, guys, very quickly, is that when the hunger section comes around after I kill the knoll, even if I kill it, I'm not gonna have any food to eat, which means I'm gonna die of starvation. <laughs> so I think, I, I think I'm kind of stuck here. I think I'm stuck, because there's nothing else I can do. I really have no powers that can stop this. So I'm just gonna go ahead and make one small effort in order to do one damage. So we are gonna kill this thing, I'm hoping, but I'm likely gonna die of starvation. So two, downgrade weapon to bare hands for one turn. Oh my gosh. Well, goodbye, wonderful sword. Uh, so this is gonna come back here. So now I have the bare hands on me. Um, and of course, uh, the, the uh, let me see here. Oh, now he's really screwed me. So now it's my turn. Um, I have nothing that I can do. So I'm gonna pass on my turn completely and not do anything. Um, so he's gonna go ahead and roll again. He hits a five. He says gain the freight condition for the next level. Can't happen twice. Um, so that's okay. Now my bare hands is gone. I got my sword back. It's my turn. I'm going to use my sword for one minor effort or small effort to get to eight. We're going to roll for him again. He got two, which is disarm. He's going to throw me. He's going to disarm me again. Knock me down to bare hands. Um, it's my turn. I, again, can't do anything, but I'm okay with what he's doing. So that's why I'm not re-rolling or using these abilities, guys, because he's not actually taking away anything from up here from me. So I skip past uh, my turn because I don't want to attack him with my effort. He hits me for nothing. It's a miss on his chart if you can't see it. This goes back. I get my sword back. And now we're going to go ahead and... Oh, we don't have to roll for anything. We're just going to use our last effort and bam, we hit nine. We killed him. Oh, stressful. Okay, so we killed him. Let's see if we can survive this onslaught. So how does this work? So let's go. We're going we're gonna to get ourselves one effort back. We're gonna get ourselves one food back. Oh my gosh, we're gonna stay alive. We're actually gonna survive again. One cunning back, one food back, one log back, one treasure, and a blade. That's so good. Okay, so that's all of that. The knoll now has been taken care of. We're gonna flip him over and put him in the, in the pile that has been defeated. I don't understand how I'm still alive. Got the skill card here, Inventive. Your planning general action is now spend three to get cunning. So basically my planning has now gotten better if I choose this skill, it's cheaper to get the cunning now. Or improvised armor, spend a log and a blade to ignore a wound effect or daze effect in combat. Hmm, interesting. 
I think I'm going to take the improvised armor. Let's go with that, because now I actually have blades and wood, so let's do that. An inventive, sorry, that's not going to be the one I choose today. Okay, so what do we do here? We've, we're moving on to, oh sorry, now we're in the hunger situation. We are in level three. I can eat two food in one effort, and guys, I'm still alive. I do not understand how I'm still alive. So I'm going to take this other uh, cube here. We're going to put this for level four. We're moving into level four now. And uh, I think that's where we're going to probably pause it for uh, a moment here. And then we're going to come right back and begin r the last level of this of this, uh, this dungeon, this cavern that we're in. And I can tell you right now, I should have died in level two. <laughs> so I don't understand how I'm still going. But somehow, some way, uh, luck is on my side here or something. So anyway, I will see you as we set up for... Level number four, not to forget, I've now gained the afraid condition, which says I gain one less, um, wow, I gain less effort when I rest now. That's nasty. So I'll put that right here so I don't forget it because I'm now afraid. And then we're going to be running into level number four. And if we can beat number four, we can actually score up and see how well I did. All right, so we're heading into level number four. How have we gotten here? I do not know. I don't understand how I'm still alive, but I am. And I'm going to continue this journey for as long as possible. Um, as you can see here, in terms of effort, I have none. I don't put any effort in. No, I don't actually have any effort whatsoever in this particular level to start with. Um, I'm going to be going in with one treasure, one log, one blade, and a cunning. I'm going to have 18 time to spend, although normally I'd have 19 if I didn't have um, that effect happen during my level 3 battle with this individual. Uh, the knoll, which actually took away some of my time at one point, which was unfair. Uh, one thing we have to note is that we are afraid, so when we go ahead and we try to rest during, like, uh, when we go after an encounter and take two cards, uh, if we choose to rest, then we're going to gain one less effort, uh, one less small effort when we do that, so that's going to kind of slow us from gaining effort, which is not the thing we really want to see right now when we don't have much effort in the first place. Uh, so the very first thing I'm going to do on my turn is the thing that makes the most sense to me, and that's going to be to get into those encounters as fast as possible because we need to see if we can get lucky enough to gain some effort back. Um, so we're going to go in and we're going to try to get some effort because that's the only thing we can really do. And we, again, we can do this through either the encounter being generous to us or by resting. And then, of course, we have to pay that afraid punishment because we're very terrified from being in level four right now. So here we go. We're going to skip past the uh, preparation step of taking any actions. I don't want to take any actions right now because I don't have any effort to spend anyway. Um, jump past the decision step of going after the number four level boss. I don't want to do that. And go right to the encounters. So let's pull two. So we found ourselves an abandoned hovel. Uh, we can spend one time. We can gain... Uh, now we'd have to spend something here in order to gain that. So this is something we can't do currently. Let's take a look at the next one. Uh, spend nothing and gain a cunning. Okay. Uh, so the question really becomes, we do have one cunning. What can cunning do for us? So cunning with the uh, advanced weapon, the sword, doesn't actually give us any benefits whatsoever. But do I have any benefits with my skills? Uh, improvised armor, no. Uh, nothing for awareness and nothing for spike thrower. So cunning's not really my thing. It's not really going to help me that much unless I wanted to try to reveal the monster before I see it. Not really a high priority for me right now. And even if I wanted to, I still have one cunning. So I might actually hold off on doing either of those. And instead, I'm going to choose to do this card here for two time, which is going to allow me to essentially lose two time to gain one small effort. That's really bad when you think about that conversion. And the reason I'm losing that one again, guys, is because of the afraid. So I'm going to gain one small effort. I'm going to be losing two time. And we're going to go right back into another encounter. Um, I could potentially try to spend this effort to do something productive. Um, as you can also see with an advanced weapon, uh, once you hit the top, there is no more upgrading. Now in the Kickstarter, this is a prototype. The Kickstarter, that might change. Uh, but currently, this is as high as I can go weapon-wise. So I'm already ready to go with my weapon. It's more of, at this point, just getting prepared. So I'm going to probably continue. Uh, now that was a rest action. So I'm going to probably continue going into the encounter deck and seeing if I get lucky here, finding something level 4. This one says spend two small efforts to gain two cunning, a steep ledge. Okay, so not exactly what I'm looking for. Let's hope for something better. Oh, wow. 
Wow, that was huge. Um, now, that would have been fantastic if we could have actually uh, been able to have um, a large amount of, of uh, effort or a, a big effort. That would have been great. Um, so, hmm, in this case, I guess the, uh, the uh, mumbling kobold's not going to work out. But in terms of this, this is probably better. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and choose this card down here. We're going to rest with this card. So again, because remember when you don't want to do either of the encounters, you can rest, as we did just previously. So I'm going to get um, three... Uh, small effort, but minus one for being afraid. So we're gonna go up two on the track, which is good. And then we're gonna lose three times. We're gonna go from 16 down to 13. And we're gonna do this again. We're gonna head right back in, try and do another encounter. Uh, oh, interesting. Oh my gosh, that's huge. Reaching the shelter. Now this is something I've, that's, uh, that's a worthwhile jump right there. So that's possibly one of the best encounters I've seen for me right now. Uh, this one, it, ooh, that one's good too. That gives me lots of medium effort. Oh my goodness, these are both fantastic. This one though, uh, I lose a log. And the reason why I wouldn't maybe want to lose a log is I have a really good spike thrower ability that lets me put wounds on. I also have this right here for improvised armor. So I don't necessarily want this, plus it's gonna consume a lot of time. So let's actually go for the reaching, instead of the glowing embers one, let's actually do, and then we're gonna do it this time, the reaching the shelter one. We're gonna spend one metal, because we don't really need metal. Uh, it's an end game, uh, we get victory points for it, but I'm gonna spend it for now in order to get myself some effort. Now remember, we're still afraid, so we're gonna technically, uh, we're at, oh, sorry, F afraid does not affect this. When I choose this encounter, it's only when I rest that I lose that small uh, effort. So in this case, because it's off an encounter card, I get to keep all of this. So I'm going to be able to go up one medium effort, and then I'm going to go up two small effort. That's fantastic. So that's really good. Um, so now we're going to go ahead and take both of these cards, and we're going to chuck them into the pile and continue on. Now, of course, that cost me one time. That was a really cheap... Uh, encounter. Let's do this again. Uh, the Blind Trader. Ooh. Oh my goodness. The Blind Trader would allow me to give him my treasure, which I have, to get two logs and two effort. Mm, that's really, that would be really helpful. And this one is, oh right, food. There's that too. You know what? We do need food because at the end of the game, we still need to survive. So you know what? Hmm. Hmm. Tough call on that one. Um, I can also rest. But if I rest, remember I don't, uh, it's not worth it to rest on one. If I do it on two, I don't know. It might be better to do one of these. So I could spend right now one of my efforts to get, let's do that, let's spend one small effort. We're gonna choose this one, we're gonna lose one time, and we're gonna go up one food. That's gonna help us at the end of this level when we have to pay for food. So we went and decided to go grab some berries on our journey. Now let's continue through this and do another encounter here. So we got Curious Tracks and Talkative Trader. Ooh, that one's pretty good too, but I don't have any more metal anymore. This one, oh my goodness, I get too cunning for that for five time. That's really expensive. Um, hmm, is that really worth it is the question. Um, oh, but again, I could rest. You know what, let's do that, let's rest. So we're gonna rest with this. I'm only gonna get four because I'm choosing to rest with it. So it's gonna be one, two, three, four. It's going to cost me five times. It's going to drop me from 11 down to six. That was a really good one, though, that way. Um, so we didn't get the full five um, or five small effort. We had to take only four, but that's still pretty good. That's, we still got a lot of, uh, we got a lot of uh, effort there or minor effort, small effort. <laughs> Keep calling it minor. Um, so that, we're a little bit better off this way now um, in terms of our attacks. Because remember, we can do with our sword, we only need... Um, small efforts to do these types of uh, armor breaking and damage. It would be really good to get another medium. It'd be fantastic to get up here, but mediums are really good for my sword. So the other thing I could do potentially is try to f trade in for to get a medium. But for now, I think I'm gonna go back out an encounter because we have lots of time to spend and we'll see if we get lucky. Perfect, we found some more berries. And ooh, we also found catching a breath. So this one, I don't just spend anything, I just gain these two. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna go ahead and catch my breath, so it's gonna cost me one. 
and it's gonna I'm gonna gain these two and I don't lose anything because I'm not technically resting I'm actually doing the encounter so then this is going to go up to perfect so that's catching breath all right and we're gonna continue on we've only got five time remaining uh, a chance to rest okay do we rest? That's a really good one, actually. Oh my goodness, Edge of Exhaust. Those are fantastic cards, holy. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to do the one for three to gain all four of those. So we're gonna go down three in time, so one, two, three. I'm gonna go up here, uh, four. So one, two, three, four. The reason I'm doing this is because I got a funny feeling that whatever monster we're gonna face, that monster is likely going to be um, nasty in the way of possibly taking things away from us maybe we'll have to see how that happens um, but anyway I've gone ahead and done this so these two are gonna go away now I have to make a decision here this is where a choice comes in because I'm getting close to the end of my time here we're going to be ambushed if we're not careful do I want to scout ahead to find out what kind of monster we have coming at us now in order to scout ahead I'd have to spend two time I do have two time uh, but the second that I spend those two time, uh, I can, sorry, I can spend those two time and I'm okay. Uh, or actually, no, I couldn't, I don't think. No, I couldn't, because that would technically be, I'd be, re I'd be revealed. Um, the monster would come after me, so that's not going to work. Uh, so I think at this point it might be worth my luck to just push my luck. Try to get, oof, that's dangerous though. Um, let's do this, let's spend... One more small effort for an Orinteer uh, ability, which allows me to reveal four cards from this encounter deck and pick one. So this one here is, oof, oh, wow, that's crazy. So Bed of Moss, um, that's crazy. Looting the supplies, wow, that's a really good one. Uh, oh, spending my cunning to gain some mediums, that could be worthwhile, but again, takes two, zero, three plus cards and next exploration. Oh, man. That's... Ooh, that is tough. Um, I don't really want to get rid of my medium one for that. Um, that's a lot, though. That's really good. Um, actually, that's not that bad. If I spend my medium to get five, I can spend four of them to get the medium back, and I technically gain one. All I would be doing, really, is gaining one small effort in the end of that exchange, which isn't that great uh, for the time that I spend. But I can't do the other two because I'll get ambushed. I could do this one. Um, I'd have to spend a small effort to do it. it. doesn't take me any time, and then I could look ahead. So let's do that. Let's spend one more small effort and risk it. It's going to allow us to pull three on the next expiration. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go and be pulling um, five cards hoping to find something really useful at the end here. So we got uh, a chance to rest. Okay, that's not gonna help us because we'll get ambushed. I mean, we can still take those ambush ones. This was a log to gain a bunch of small effort. Uh, another one of those, um, this one this time is not free. You can see that changed. Ooh, this one is not gonna take us any time. Gnarled branches to gain more wood. And one time to gain two, two small efforts. So basically, uh, I went ahead and I tried to get something really, really useful, but nothing really popped out at me. So what I could do just to save myself here is do the catching of breath, which would basically just get me back to where I was, which is what I'll probably do. It's gonna cost me one time, so I go like this. And at this point in time, I think I'm just gonna say, let's face the monster. I'm done messing around. Let's see what we can do. Um, the one thing I wanna do before I face the monster though, is I think, I think, actually no, I don't want to convert anything, and this is another strategy too, you do not have to convert anything from your effort tracker um, into your medium actions, I mean you can, at this point in time that's kind of part of the strategy, do I convert some of the stuff in my small effort into mediums or even larger, uh, or do I wait, remember though when you're actually fighting the enemy when it finally comes out, um, that particular enemy 
uh, when it comes out is going to uh, only allow you to attack it or to take an action. So basically every time that you're messing around trying to do an action to exchange, it's going to potentially be able to hit you. So I'm looking at this and my sword makes the best attacks rate like this with three. So I think I should probably do an action right now to uh, focus, which would allow me to spend, which would have me spend four small effort to get another medium. So I'm going to do that, I think, because I think, oh, I don't know. You know what? Mm, that's tough. That's really tough. You know what? I'm not going to do it. I'm going to hold off and see how, see how this plays out. Um, so let's go ahead and risk it. Let's risk it. <laughs> I don't know if this is a good idea or not. So I'm going to get the monster thing set back to zeros here. We don't know what it is, but we're planning to forge ahead here during the decision step and find out what our final enemy is. And it is a wyvern if i'm saying that correctly 16 health good gracious special at the start of combat gain the poison condition immediately Ugh, gross uh so we're gonna basically be poisoned right away so before i do anything else let's just find that pleasant card because this is gonna likely have some type of really nasty effect on us as we fight this thing poison before taking your turn in combat lose um, a small effort equal to the number of tokens on this card. Place one token on this card when it enters play. Um, oh, geez, that's bad. Oh, I see. His actual abilities here are going to start putting poison on me on five or six rolls. So basically, place one token on this card when it enters play. So as of right now, we're going to put a token on this on this card because... Uh, it says right here before taking your turn in combat you lose a small effort So he's gonna be sucking. He's gonna be slowly sapping our energy away um, Through poison, which is not good. Uh, it says your combat action uh, spend cunning and uh, Meat to inflict four wounds. Oh, so I can spend a cunning and a meat if I wanted to inflict four wounds So that might be something I might need to do later on if I want to try to survive Gives me an option, and this is the combat actions for him. Yikes. Okay, so let's set him up like we normally do. We're going to go ahead and grab 16 health on this track. So we're going to jump this up to 16. Uh, Armor-wise, he doesn't have any armor, so that's great. We can just go right into the attacking. Uh, so we're going to start our fight right now. So the very first thing that I'm going to do is I've got to decide what my first move is going to be, and it likely is probably going to be just to attack him big time. So I'm probably going to use my, my medium attack unless I can get it uh, more for something else. Um, no, it looks like the medium attack would be the best. So I'm gonna actually just go ahead and use a medium effort and this is going to use the sword to inflict three damage on this guy. And sorry, this should be on zero. I keep always putting it at the total health. So three damage is gonna jump this up to three. So we're on our way to uh, hurting it. Um, it does say here though that I should have before taking your turn in combat lose uh, one uh, small effort equal to the number of tokens on the card. We have one on the card, so this goes down to 13. Shoot. Now it's going to go over to uh, the uh, Wyvern. We're going to take a die. We're going to roll this, see if we can survive. Oh, geez, we got a six. So it says here, um, reduce a larger, a large effort uh, to three small effort or lose three small effort if unable, plus one poison. Oh my goodness, that is terrible. Um, Oh, that's so bad. So because we didn't know that in advance, we're gonna lose three. So one, two, I lose three small effort because of that. Oh, that hurts. And a poison token goes on top of this card too. Jeez. Okay, so it's back to me. Um, wow. Uh, let me just make a, a quick check here. Um, it says reduce a wound effect you suffer uh, by... Uh, a wound effect you suffer by... Okay, so I couldn't have... I couldn't have... I don't think I could use just a scratch to reduce that because reduce a wound effect. It's, is it a wound effect? I guess it technically is. Um, yeah, because the poison's coming after my small effort. So I'm gonna say that I can do that. So, but the other thing I could do is I could say I've seen worse and re-roll. Maybe that's what I do. So let's go one, two, three, and say, forget losing that. Let's actually spend one of our cubes here for our special abilities and re-roll that die. I don't want to see that kind of a roll. 
Oh my goodness, I still got a six anyway, so I'm stuck with it. Uh, so there we go, we'll reduce it three. I have I had no choice. I'll, of course, I leave the poison cube that's already on there. Okay, so that didn't pan out. So now it's back to uh, my turn. Um, I'm gonna go ahead now with only 10 effort. Uh, what can I do, what can I do? So what, what are my heavier hits over here? Uh, improvised armor, let's see, spend a log or a metal to ignore a wound effect or daze effect in combat. Um, ignore all steel effects in combat, to, and that's okay. Combat actions, uh, spend a small effort on a wood to inflict two damage. So I might as well do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the wood and one small effort to inflict two damage. So now we're up to five, we're getting there. Okay, I'm a little worried here. Uh, so this is back to the Wyvern, uh, I'm kind of afraid. Oh, and sorry, before taking your combat turn, you lose, because I'm uh, poisoned, so I'm down to eight. Jeez, uh, oh my goodness, another six. Well, I'm definitely using a cube here to say I've seen worse, I want to re-roll that. Please don't be another six. Okay, a two, that's a little better. It says lose uh, a food and the wyvern heals one wound, you lose two if unable. Oh my gosh, so they're gonna steal my food from me, uh, and this guy heals one back. So he's gonna go back down, he's only got four wounds now. So it comes back to me on my turn, um, before taking your turn in combat. Oh shoot, actually, sorry guys, this would have gone down two in the last one for being poisoned, so I should be at seven, and right now, starting this next combat phase, I'm down to five because of poisoned. Again, it keeps triggering every single time before I take a combat, that's nasty. I've only got five effort left. I might need to do this. Oh, he took my food from me. Oh, maybe I should have done that first. Um, yeah, that would have been smart. That was really stupid of me. So that's a big mistake on my part. I probably should have done the combat action on that first because I had a cunning and I had a food and if I had got rid of it, that would have been better. Uh, so I can't do that combat action now, which is this one here for me, which is a cunning. And so I'm gonna have to go back to my small effort and see if I can do anything else. Um, hmm. I don't even know if I can beat him now. Yeah, I think I'm in trouble. So, so I'm gonna go ahead and use one small effort uh, to go ahead and put another wound on him. He's at five. Um, it says when attacking with a weapon, spend two to increase the power of attack by one. That's really not that great. Um, yeah, that's not good at all. No, I'm doing this like one at a time basically so I can hit him. Yeah, that's not good. That's not good. Okay, so it's back to his turn. Uh, he's gonna roll. He got a one. Okay, so it just says lose one. Oh my goodness, a small effort. Uh, he's whittling me down. And then it comes back to my turn. Um, of course, uh, I lose two before taking my turn in combat. Uh, so now I'm gonna be down to one. And then even if I choose to fight right now, which I would, essentially, I basically become exhausted. There's nothing I can do to stop this. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw one extra damage at him, hit him, and just like that, the poor brawler has fallen and succumbed to his uh, injuries and his exhaustion. Uh, we made it all the way to the fourth level. We did pretty good. Uh, I think if I had a won this, I would have won it by the skin of my teeth and probably adding up points wise. My guess, based on the uh, way the categories are summed up here at the back of the prototype manual, I guarantee you I would probably be in the lower portion of the scoring chart based on my poor performance in this one. But I can just tell you that I had a blast. Um, regardless of being uh, beaten up, what was really cool, the things that I really enjoyed about this game so far is how well balanced it is. It obviously does a really good job of, um, when you get to the end of a particular level, you actually do feel like you can just squeak out a win if you play it right. Uh, there was a couple times in level two and three where I didn't think I actually could make it and I just had enough resources to make it work. Uh, so you really have to keep track of what combinations you should use first. In this case, when I was fighting the level four uh, individual here, I should have gone and done this combat action for the cutting in the food first for four damage. You know, then on top of the other big hit I made, I would have been up to around eight. I would have been half at his health. I probably still wouldn't have killed it. 
but I would have put more damage into it and it would have stopped him from stealing it from me. Uh, so things like that, you kind of learn as you go through it and realize there's different uh, elements to it. Of course, I could have also scouted him in advance to find out what types of things uh, that I'd be running into, but you know, the cost of things was increasing as that was going along. There's a lot of really cool and unique things happening here. And the other thing that's really nice too, guys, you can notice it's a really small footprint on the table. So this game caters to the solo gamer and that's one of the major reasons why I'm showcasing it on the channel here with the Kickstarter preview. I hope you guys enjoyed the playthrough. Hope it helps you make a decision at the end of the day because it's your hard earned money. And at the end of the day, I really just want to make sure you guys know what's going on with a particular game on Kickstarter and whether or not it's something that may interest you. So hopefully this helped in that regard. And I also want to let you guys know there's going to be a surprise coming to Rolling Solo in regards to Unbroken. For those of you that are regulars on the channel and subscribers, you know exactly what I'm talking about. But for those of you that are new, you're going to want to stick around because there's going to be a surprise related to Unbroken within the first few days of the Kickstarter and I want you to be aware of that and not miss out. So keep your eyes peeled and that will be coming out within uh, before the end of the month, so the end of March. All right, the last thing I want to show you guys is a quick little preview of the other enemies in the game that you didn't get to see during the playthrough. I thought that'd be kind of fun to show you guys what you could have run into, uh, the different types of uh, creatures and things like that in these caverns and dungeons. So uh, first off, before we do those creatures, though, we'll do the heroes. So when I went ahead actually and started, I chose the brawler. So we had the brawler in play and we became very familiar with this during the playthrough. So this was the brawler as one of the playable characters in the base game. Uh, we have the same Sage, which is another one you can see again the uh, actions that the sage can take very different than the uh, the brawler plays differently as well uh, we have the sneak uh, again likely trying to dodge and sneak past things like that and then we have the Huntress. And you can see that some of these uh, abilities are different than the Brawlers. They have things like it says travel action. So you can only do these certain things in certain phases, unlike the Brawlers, which were pretty open-ended and more so specified when they were supposed to be used. These ones actually give you a quick little verbiage up there saying you have to do that during the travel action, during the travel phase. So uh, again, Huntress, another uh, individual you can use. Now these are the four base characters. And of course, as we go through uh, the Kickstarter, that's gonna likely increase, although we're not 100 sure about that but uh, you could expect it um, in terms of the different types of enemies here now the game how it actually works versus how I played it during the playthrough is when you actually go from level one which we had here to level two then to level three and then finally four as you're moving across the levels you actually when you're about to either scout out and find out which um, creature from whichever level you're, you're going after or you're re re um, revealing it you're supposed to roll a die and you'd roll a die and then you'd go to your particular level and I would go okay uh, from level one you go check the number which is down here in the bottom until you find the six so basically I'm going to show you these creatures and show you how that can work uh, again how I did the ramization was I just randomly flip these things over and pulled one out, randomly flipped one of these over, pulled it out and did the same for all four and then put them one, two, three, four in a stack and that resolved the whole rolling situation, made it a little bit quicker as well. Uh, but you can do it as the rule state and also roll the die. So either way works really. Uh, the Feral Hyena is one of the level one characters. We're very familiar with this individual. So we'll put this guy aside. Uh, the other one here is a Shrieking Fungus. So there's uh, the combat actions for that particular monster and its ambush. We've got the Cobalt. So I'm just going to give you guys kind of a quick high level overview. Of course, you can always pause if you want to take a quick look at each and one individually. A giant spider that can find you all in level one. And the rewards are different. And uh, the Gibberling. Some of these level ones are actually a little bit nicer than uh, the one I went up against. And the Were Rat. So there you go. That's level one. Level two, we ran into the goblin. So this is the goblin. We're very familiar with the goblin. The other one, we could have possibly, huh, we could have actually raised into a, ran into a crazy survivor. So someone just like us that basically never got out of the caverns could have come after us. Um, an abomination. So this is as Cthulhu-ish as you could imagine. So someone is just absolutely vicious. Their eyeballs and teeth and of every possible angle. Uh, the cave bear, of course, what it would be a cavern without a cave bear coming after you, so that's uh, it's a possible level 2 monster. Uh, a gremlin, that's another possible monster. Uh, uh, troglodyte, troglodyte, I'm not going to try to say that, uh, I'm going to mess it up, but uh, 
it's that thing. Whatever that thing is, that's that. Uh, the knoll, this is level three now, so the knoll's the one we actually took out, again, magically, that was very surprising. Uh, the orc brute, now we're getting into territory that's a little bit more familiar, these guys are going to be armored up and ready for us, the dark elf. Um, so, wow, look at the rewards on the dark elf, that is crazy. You get through the dark elf, you get some good stuff. Uh, wow, that guy's got some pretty cool art, look at the ambush on that guy. Seven, seven time for the ambush. That would just absolutely devastate your next, uh, your next level. Bugbear. Some of these are really, really interesting. Um, Hobgoblin. Very cool. Or oh, sorry, yeah, Hobgoblin. I was thinking for a second I said that wrong. And then we go to the level fours. So we went up against the uh, the wyvern or wyvern, and uh, this guy was actually pretty tough. Destroyed us with poison. Like absolutely devastated us with poison. Uh, you can also go up and uh, up against an org. Uh, wow, uh, a vampire. Oh, geez, that that would be vicious. I'm sure. Uh, ignores your first attack. Does lots of things like confusing you and wounding you. Uh, oh, wow. Twelve paralyzed condition. Combat. Wow. Okay, that's decent. The troll. Classic troll. So hopefully this is giving you guys a good overview of the ones that are already included as part of the base game experience. Of course the Kickstarter could likely enhance these. There could be a lot more that get added into the pile. But that's it. I just wanted to kind of go over the ones that you didn't get to see during the playthrough. Uh, so we already covered the character cards. We covered all the monsters. And the only other thing I didn't really talk too much about is other weapons. So we started with the bare hands. We went down the upgraded knife route. So we basically got this knife after we got our bare hands. And then later on during the playthrough, we actually acquired the sword. And that was the final uh, from this path. So that was the knife path. If we had gone down the club path, we would have got a basic weapon as a club, and then that club would have turned into either the maul or the axe. So basically it's like this or like this. And on the opposite side over here, when we were at the knife stage, we could have gone with the sword, which is what we did essentially, and the spear right here. So this is essentially the tree, you could say, of how to build out the weapons and the paths you have to take to get to either the maul, uh, the axe, the sword, or the spear as the advanced weapons. Again, this is likely to change during the Kickstarter. There could be extras, there could be more. The tree could get larger, but included in the base game at least, and the prototype copy that I have, this is the tree we had, and we went down the uh, sword route, being a typical brawler. So anyway, that's going to basically sum up the full preview. Uh, this is kind of like a little behind the scenes of the extra components of the box you didn't get to see. So if you wanted to pause the screen at any point in time, take a quick look at it. Remember, it's all prototype type and could change at any point in time. Thanks again for watching and as always keep on rolling solo. Uh, thanks so much for uh, following along in this playthrough and preview. Hope you check out the Kickstarter when it lands on the 27th and I'll see you in the next episode. Thanks again for watching and as always keep on rolling solo.